There's my sweet friends. How is everyone on this Monday afternoon? It's been busy. I just found out that I have to make a quick trip, actually a couple days to LA for a conference. And we're booking that this morning. So that's where I've been. And then what else was happening? All good stuff, but busy. Whenever I have to go away for a trip, um, I always take some kind of makeup. That way we can do tutorials while I'm gone, some kind of tutorial but I have to film so many videos. So I'm gonna have to film a couple videos in between this tutorial and I'm gonna figure out some stuff. We're gonna figure it out. You know what? We gotta stay hydrated. But what I'm thinking about doing is I did that concealer video and it did really, really well. Y'all absolutely loved it. But I I don't know if, if you, I, I have an idea to kind of do some really dark circles underneath my eyes and cover them up and show you ways to really cover them up. I think that'll be a really good video. But in the meantime, let's do an eye look. We're gonna use this palette again, the Huda one. We're trying to decide which palette is the palette that we wanna to add to our collection if we're wanting to add a palette, of course. But there have been a lot of really nice palettes drop recently. And I really, really enjoyed this. I do have this look. The first look I did, it's on my saved highlights. So if you wanna check that out, but let's start with some eyeshadow base. Really quickly, I wanna show you how thin I have this eyeshadow base. It's very pigmented, but you want it extremely thin and even across the lid. Any thicker than this, and if it's not perfectly smooth, it is going to crease. But if you have it really nice and thin and even across the lid, it's the best eyeshadow base ever. I think we're just gonna do a cut crease. I haven't done one in a while. I've been trying to branch out, but I just need to do one. I'm gonna start with that shade. This is gonna be our transition, and you're gonna notice that I lay down the transition first. And what I'm doing is I'm just kind of setting through here really quickly. When you lay your first transition down like this it makes everything blend in so much more smoothly later it's nice seeing it in real time isn't it i know the one minute slides might not be ideal because you kind of have to sit here but it also it's really really helpful because you can see how things really blend and how it works out in real time so i'm just going to let it run again this is our very first transition and I'm using the side of the brush to press this in. There you go. Okay, so I have just a little bit more of that same shade and we're just gonna make sure it's even. And what I do recommend is don't do what I'm doing right here. <laughs> so let's just, let's pretend that this phone is my mirror. So what I'll do is I'll look straight into the mirror and I'll just continue to shade to make sure that this is all nice and even but it's a little harder for me to see in my phone. But if you're seeing me look to the side here, I'm really trying to look straight into my mirror just to make sure it's nice and even. Still using the side of the brush and I'll just kind of go back and forth. But let's like, let's pretend that this is the mirror. I'm also really glad that y'all are loving the idea of the dark circles. I'm gonna do more blue purple circles and then I'll do darker circles. But also I, I, I honestly want to talk to y'all about it because I, Somehow in my mind, because you know how thoughtful I can be, um, I don't want it to be offensive. I, I don't know how it would be offensive because it's a wonderful learning moment, but I, I, I don't want people to, to be offended by it. But then also, I feel like it's October and if we're gonna be a vampire, we wanna know how to do that anyways. <laughs> I just always wanna be thoughtful and have y'all in mind. Y'all mean the world to me, but also it's something I get a lot of questions about and I also, get a lot of comments like, that's great Rose, but you don't have dark circles, but I still have the ability to help you. And I, I just wanna make sure that y'all will be okay with that video. All right, next up with a cut crease, you go into your next darkest shade. It's actually very simple. I just feel like no one really took the time to explain it to me. So that's what I'm doing now. So you'll notice the shadow is on this side. Flip that towards the ceiling. And we're just gonna start to push that into the socket. So we're gonna use three shades. This is our second shade right here. 
and then we're gonna start to kind of bring that out this way. Remember, the shadow's only on one side. And I'm kind of using this part to kind of push up and shade, still tapping. Let me finish this one over here. And then I also want to take whatever's left here and I'm gonna push it into the front of my brow. I'm feeling spicy. Yes. And by the way, I wanna let you know that I don't love this in the palette. I don't love it. You can still see my finger through it. It's not that pigmented. And then even once it gets on the eye, it didn't really do much. It just kind of blends in base, no base under it. It just, this, this wasn't, this wasn't it. And then this one, I haven't used this one, but I'm assuming that it's the same. It's just not the vibe. It's not that great. I prefer the, if you're wanting a black base, this one here from City Color, just I know it's a little intimidating, but that's what I'm here for. I talk about it a lot, so don't be afraid of it. But that's what this kind of is emulating, but this one is just so much better. So much better. Now we're gonna use our darkest shade and we're gonna pick that up on the tip of the brush. And I'll, again, I'm trying to pretend like this is my mirror, even though it's a little bit harder. And we're gonna take that and just push that into the deepest part of the socket. And if you have hooded eyes, let's, let's, let's have a little chat about hooded eyes. I'm gonna pick up more, and I'm also picking up a very small amount. But if you have hooded eyes, what you would do is you kind of have to create a different crease. So I'm going to do that here. And what I'm doing is I'm relaxing my eye and I'm creating another fold. So I'm going way above that one. Now, right now I have a very tight bun, so I don't have anything overlapping here. But if I didn't, I do have semi-hooded eyes as I get older, picking up more of that. And also I pick up very tiny amounts of this dark shade at first. All right, if we are gonna talk hooded eyes, please do yourself a favor and use the tiniest brush as possible. This one is, I will say this one is just absolutely perfect because of the angle. But if not, and you already have a small brush in your collection, just go grab it. And I'm gonna continue to shade under. So what I do is I'm kind of laying down this initial dark area, the dark shadow, and then I'll go and I'll shade under that one even more. And that creates that kind of faux crease. Hooded eyes is just about kind of creating another crease higher. Trying to do all of this in real time and then I'm gonna grab some more and head over this way. Then grab this one again, the one, the E28 that we started out with. Grab this shade, our second transition, and then just tap that right above a little bit just to kind of smooth it out. And if you really wanted to make this a cut grease, we would add some black but I kind of like it the way it is. Nice. All right, so I just hopped off and filmed a TikTok, but I'm gonna do it for you here. That's why we have two eyes. <laughs> so with this, I feel like I wanna scoop it out. I tried my finger, but it didn't come out evenly on my finger, so unfortunately, I'm gonna have to scoop it out. And I say unfortunately because I know most of you hate when I do that, I'm sorry. But look at this. I didn't even have to clean up my lid. I can just kind of go to town with a C30 and move this around on my lid. Now, I'm not sure how it sets or what happens. We're testing that out right now. Get back here. But you can just cut the crease. And it is pigmented. And it's shiny. We like shiny here, don't we? And then we'll bring it out this way. Again, I feel that when I leave this blank space here, it looks absolutely feral. <laughs> but it really helps when you go to add your liner later. Also, I want to mention I really like that I didn't have to lay down a base to really get a nice carved lid here. This is really, really nice. But I am curious how it's going to wear. 
Uh, by the time we're done here, that should be enough time to see if it's going to flake or move around, so we'll see. Also, this is such a good representation on why it's so important to look straight ahead and completely relax your eyes when you're doing any kind of detail work. Notice how this one's peeking through a little bit more. This one's higher right here. And you'll see my natural fold there. And you'll see that I'm taking this above my natural fold. And you'll see that I need to take this one a little bit more above my natural fold to match. I'm gonna tilt my head back a little bit only so I can make sure I'm really nice and precise. That's pretty close. We could bring this one up just a smidgey, smidgey, smidge higher. So one more thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab an E26 and that darkest shade that we used. And I'm just going to create a little bit more dimension right above. I know we don't think of angled brushes this way, but they actually work really nicely to really, really, really define with powder eyeshadows. We think a lot of times of gel liner, but using them for shading is fantastic. One thing I do wish was in this palette was a shade that was darker than this one and this one. They look darker in the pan, but they're actually not that dark when they go on. And again, I don't love the creams. Why do I have alligator hands? <laughs> but um, this is quite lovely. And again, we're still going to use it one more time. I mean, I could swatch these for you really quickly. I mean, they're beautiful. I'll say this one is more of a topper, the one that I used initially. So this one is more see-through. And I didn't want y'all to think that it wasn't good. It's more of a topper. And I like that about it. But you can see there is a gold that's very pigmented. That's gorgeous. This is really beautiful. So pretty. Look how rose gold and lovely that is. So the shimmer is always top notch, but I will say these mattes, which I'm sure most of us have these warm mattes, are great, but... Okay, listen. Over the weekend, I had the chance to play around with this. This is from She Loom. This is so affordable, y'all. These are so good. I absolutely love these. So they're water-activated shadows. I have my little water bottle here. And I'm going to spray some, and I'm going to do some of the yellow. And you're going to be like, what the heck are you doing? Why are you doing this? We're still going to do a black line, but I want to do yellow. Get ready. These are so good. That it's good. <laughs> Just get ready. Okay, so they're so wonderful. But also don't be afraid of going a little wild here. Because the black will go over this so easily since it's not a shimmer. Look at how pigmented these are. And they're so easy to use. And they don't move around. And they stay really nice and controlled a lot of times sometimes liquids can move around these you have a lot of control over i mean look at this so much fun also trust the process dear lord i'm I, I, i'm sure by now y'all know to trust the process does anybody remember those anastasia beverly hills colorful liners that came out like six years ago do you remember those? This is how pigmented I wanted that yellow to be, and it wasn't. Although, you know what? Formulas have come a long, a long way, and I'm not saying that that wasn't wonderful. For the time, it was wonderful, but this is what I had envisioned. Oh, and before I get to foundation, I want to film another foundation in HD. I love those. I can't wait. I need to do another one. But tell me what foundation you want to see in HD. Tell me right here before we get to this and then i'll finish concealer here and everything but i'll hop off and film that because we want to see it in hd and then i'll wear it for a couple of hours and we'll see what it looks like in hd so let me know so now i'm going to go in with my valentino liner because i know it's not going to bleed onto the yellow and we just go right under it bring it all the way over so now I just have micellar water here on a C30. I'll do this side for y'all. And we just clean it up. And I just wipe my brush on Sheila. And I just kind of keep going back and perfecting. I just think this is really cool. And I wanted to thicken this line a little bit more and kind of correct right here. But I wanted to show you that it's pigmented enough to go on top of this black liner. 
I'm telling y'all. It's so affordable and I just love it. It's so much fun. It just brings so much creativity and I love that. Okay. I'm sad. This is creasing. I know you can see it right there. There you go, you can definitely see it. Man, that doesn't normally happen with me either. I knew it. I, I knew from the consistency of what's in the middle. You'll have to remember, I use a lot of makeup. I use it a lot, a lot of times. Now we can fix it, but that is a really disappointing. Boo. And y'all see me do my makeup almost every single day and y'all know we normally don't have creasing. So see, but that's what I knew. I knew that that consistency, because it almost feels like Vaseline and that doesn't do well with body heat. We can fix it though. It's not that big of a deal, um, but it does kind of make me not want to tell you to run and buy this. I, I, gosh, this is the part I don't like, but, but let's, let's just take this as a learning situation. So far the Pat McGrath one, in terms of the holiday releases, I don't want to tell you to buy a palette, but if you're wanting one so far, the Pat McGrath has just been very special in my heart. Um, I actually really enjoy most of Huda's palettes. But this one just isn't, it isn't singing to me. Okay. So we're going to fix this but we're gonna fix it with these. And I wanna give credit to the creator, Rocio. I'm gonna tag her. She was the first person I saw try these and I was like, I want that. But I wanna show this because it's a powder, so it's going to be able to kind of go over any of these gaps and fill in gaps. I might actually put some on a brush, but first let's just lay it down like this. And it's the same color too. Ooh, it's pretty. I wanted to see it on its own. <laughs> makeup y'all oh my gosh all right so we're just gonna grab it the same chalk i just showed y'all i can't there's so many different colors too we're gonna have so much fun with these we're gonna take that and we're just gonna press it into that and it's gonna fill in those gaps and because it's a really dry formula it should set that kind of vaseline gel situation that we have going on I'm gonna leave this side kind of patchy and we're gonna leave it like that for a second because I'm filming a TikTok and I wanted to make sure that everyone saw that it's not working out the way we wanted it to. But I'm just gonna set this aside. This is the container it comes in. I'm time of my life. <laughs> Let's do some Ardell 576s. Is it 576 or 576s? The world may never know. Just like the Tootsie Pop. I do love these so much. They're so pretty. And the lash band is so comfortable. It's almost non-existent. And let your lash glue get tacky for just a second. This one gets tacky very quickly. I've kind of, I used to use the Duo Dark Tone, but I switched to Line It Lash It. I love it. It gets tacky almost instantly. And we can already just go in and pinch these to our natural lashes. Oh, so get feral in here. As I was saying. The lash glue gets tacky very quickly and then I'll just kind of pinch it here towards the front. And what I'm doing is I'm pinching my natural lashes to the faux lashes. And then I'll just kind of make sure they're nice and lifted. So pretty. So everyone wanted to see a more affordable foundation and I actually saw this foundation quite a few times. So this is the one we're gonna use this one. Why am I a mess? I will say this cap gets really dirty or I'm just dirty, I'm filthy. I'm a filthy makeup monster. So I'm gonna hop off really quickly and film this. This won't take me but a second, so let me go do that. And I'm also going to clean the bottle. Get it together, Rose. Can't be showing people this level of makeup filth. Goodness me. Okay, pretend that that's how you saw it. <laughs> I'll be right back. I'm back, and by the way, not even that milk stuff can save this. Like, it's just, um. It's just having issues. This foundation's so pretty. I can't wait for you to see it with back camera. Now, whenever you use a full coverage foundation, I want you to keep this in mind, it's going to look very jarring and it's almost impossible to find your perfect true match when it comes to full coverage foundation. And the reason why it blanks everything out. You're not even gonna see your undertone peeking through. 
Um, this is still in my undertone. This one's very neutral, but because my chest is a little bit more red, it's very jarring. So that's a really good tip when it comes to full coverage foundation. You have to bring it all back together before you can decide if it's a really good match for you. So let's finish this up because I know y'all are thinking, whoa, what's happening? But it's just very full coverage. I'm gonna keep with the full coverage here. I actually need to pick up that other shade I mentioned. I don't even know what it is, but it's more peachy. But I will say I used this the other day and when we use a peachy or pink uh, powder on top, it works out beautifully. And I'm only gonna put this underneath my eyes. I use the tiniest amount. Okay, I'll use whatever's left here. And this stuff is so pigmented. This is an OG, it's so good, but I will say it's a little difficult to figure out how to use it, but that's what I'm here for. So I want you to know that that was less than that. It's just so pigmented. So something like this is gonna last you for a very long time. I'm gonna grab a fluffy brush here. This is the E29 and I'm gonna start to tap that in. So pretty. It is just a smidgy to yellow, but we're gonna use a peachy powder anyway, so it's gonna be absolutely perfect and just kind of even everything. This is a truly incredible product. I feel that it just takes a lot of education and it just needs somebody there to kind of show you different ways to use it and how to properly use it. And that's what I'm here for. So whenever you use this, it's gonna have beautiful coverage, but a little bit is gonna go a long way and a little bit fluffier brush is going to shear it out a little bit. We're still gonna have that beautiful coverage, but with a dense brush, this is going to be, I guess the only word I can say is heavy, but a fluffier brush is gonna be wonderful for everyday wear. I don't know how long you've been with me, but there was a time that I was using the She Glam powder nonstop. And then I started to try to find other affordable powders. And I always go on these adventures with makeup because, you know, I love makeup and it's my job. But you know what? I have started using this again and this is my favorite affordable powder. It's beautiful. I mean, it just speaks for itself. And y'all, it's so affordable. Plus it's a duo, so if I wanna brighten, which I will, just to show y'all, I'll show y'all how I use it. But at the time we were trying e.l.f., we were just trying them all. And I've been asked a lot recently about affordable ones. This is it. If you need something affordable, this is it. It's so alluring and it holds up and it's waterproof. I love it. I'm gonna go ahead and set the rest of my face with the loose side. And then I'm gonna do powders from here on out. So we don't have to worry about mixing any cream. So I'm just gonna use whatever's left here in the puff. And then we'll do the forehead. I'm gonna grab a little bit more for the forehead. Oh, I, I forgot about, we have the puff now. I've been using it so much as a prototype, I forget to tell y'all. Anyways, the puff. We have the puff now. Let's use this, I love this. It has the bronzer in it too and the contour. I might not contour, only because my heart's not in this look anymore because of this. So I'm just gonna finish it up though because I am filming the in HD situation. But this is a beautiful contour palette. I have it on reels and I have a little bit of demo on how to use it. That's a beautiful color, just absolutely beautiful. Apply some here and I'm using this shade as a bronzer and if you are going to contour you want to use the bronzer first it's going to act as a transition for the contour but again if you watch that video i talk about it oh that is pretty and it just starts to tie in everything so i want to take this time to show you what i was talking about do you see how much more this all matches now this is my perfect match what happens and, and it even happens with light to medium coverage foundations as well you start to blank all of this out and then you're going, whoa, this looks absolutely horrifying. It's not matching. You kind of have to wait till you bring everything back. Even I need to get blush on before I can even see this. But you have to wait till the very end to really see how that foundation looks on you. A lot of times we'll go in, swatch, we'll go, okay, yeah, that was great. Then we go home, put it on, terrify ourselves, and then we're like, this is all wrong. 
but do your makeup do the complete look and then look in natural light look in your bathroom light look at everything before you decide because you have to bring all of these this and these dimen all of this dimension we have here back to that full coverage or even medium or light coverage foundation this is one of my new favorite blushes now i feel like it's a really nice bright pink but it it's not too cool toned. Let me show you in comparison. I know you're going rose, that's such a pink. What are you talking about? What are you even talking about? Compared to say Kylie Winter Kissed, um, you can see that it has a little bit more warmth. See that difference? Winter Kissed is very similar to this one. This one's also from Beauty Creations. It's called My Favorite, this one is. And then this one's called Mood. This is what I used the other day when we did the Y2K Alien. It's very pigmented. And we'll just put that right on top. Isn't that pretty? It's so pigmented, but it's so smooth and it's just beautiful. Again, starting to really come together. Please get this, I'm a mess. Please go get this. It's pricey, but it's incredible. This is the Stila liner in Charleston. Look at that. This is the brightest gold liner and it wears, it looks like this all day. It's, <laughs> Now I just grabbed this shade from, oh Lord have mercy, this shade from the palette on an E27 and I'll just tap that underneath here. Let's do it, why not? Ah, my drawer won't close. City Color, y'all know how much I absolutely adore these and I don't even think, this is so pigmented, I'm not even gonna deal with the uh, lip liner. I've talked about liquid lips and lip liners. Whenever you wanna add a lip liner that sometimes changes the formula and then they don't last as long. So just kinda line the lips or grab an E26. I don't even know if this one's clean. Clean enough. You can use this one. As a liner. Perfect. Oh, I forgot I was gonna show you the brightening part. This brush is a prototype. You just want something short and dense. And then we'll just kind of pack this on a little bit more to brighten underneath the eye. It's just so smoothing. And oh, again, two for one special. Mmm. <laughs> That's smooth. So pretty for that okay we are all finished um other than the creasing i actually love this look i love bronze and red together and then the yellow and then my nails so spicy so i'm actually not going to post tonight because that last post actually my last two posts are going absolutely feral and just a little insight on what how i have to do things when the algorithm is being nice to you you don't mess with that algorithm. <laughs> oh, hi, G. She's a cruel mistress. But since I'm not posting, I'm going to take all of this off and I'm going to film some really helpful videos. I'm going to film with these little situations here, the little chalks. Um, I have a really good tip for cream blush. And, and then I'm going to finish. I'm going to finish the foundation in HD. So that's what I'm gonna do this evening. I have a lot to do, but I have really fun stuff to do. I'm so excited. I love y'all so much. And keep those requests coming because foundation in HD is a whole series. So just because I didn't use it today doesn't mean that I'm not gonna use it. So keep those requests coming. And I want you to know I love you very much.